Hey guys, welcome to the latest edition of La Liga Fam. We're just getting all the speakers in and we'll start in a bit. I'm just going to wait for a couple more minutes, three minutes in fact. We'll start at 10 o'clock, so just stay, hang in there guys. We'll start in right across three minutes. Welcome to the new listeners down there. We're just waiting for a couple more speakers and we'll get underway in just about 60 seconds. How's everyone doing? Uh, La Liga Lowdown, Matt, Anand, Bombay Pena, PNM Kerala, Atleti India, Nihal. How's everyone doing, guys? I'm very well, doing thank good. you. Doing good. Doing great. You're doing good. Doing great. Doing great. Doing great. How are you doing, Suraj? All good. Okay. One, I just saw you. Uh, I've just sent you a request to speak. Just accept the request, buddy, and we'll get you on stage. Hope you've got the request. And there's just Dharma left. So we just start in like 30 seconds. Okay, guys, it's 10 o'clock. That means it's time for La Liga Fam, episode number 10. It's a pleasure, of course, hosting you guys. My name is Suraj Balakrishnan. And we are, of course, you know, this is brought to you by MTV India and Boot Select, the broadcasters for the La Liga season in India for the next three seasons, actually. And it's an absolute pleasure to host you and to get all the promotional activities as well before the match day begins. With me is uh, La Liga Lockdown, lep- represented by Matt. Matt, welcome to the show. You're making your debut here. Yes, thank you very much, Siraj. It's great to be on here. Looking forward to uh, discussing all of the fantastic action um, from the past weekend and, and what's to come. Absolutely, Matt. Some great games, including a 4-3 thriller that we have to talk about. Next up is, of course, Anand, who's been here before, the co-founder of FCB Mumbai. Anand, how's it going? It's going good, Suraj. Hope you're doing well. Great, good to hear, hear from you, buddy. Uh, next up, of course, Bombay Penya, one of our regulars on the show, represented by Aditya. Aditya, you're making your debut. Nervous? Yeah, yeah, Suraj, it's great to be here. Uh, great people to talk with. Yes, this is my first one and uh, looking forward to this one. Thank you. Fantastic, Aditya. Great to have a newbie in board. And of course, another veteran joining us, just like Anand, who's been here before, Anandu Sankar from Kerala. Anandu, hi. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Is it too hot? Uh, yeah, the things are getting so hot here, <laughs> and also in La Liga, I guess. I'm actually also right now currently stationed in Kerala for a bit, so I can I can feel you, my friend. It is indeed getting very very hot. Let's hope the football as well. It's oh, wow. equally hot and equally warm in the weekend. So, <laughs> looking forward to talking to you about Madrid's games. Next up, of course, representing Atleti India is another debutant, Adna Mukherjee. Adna, uh, welcome aboard and uh, tell us, how are you feeling? Uh, thank you so much for the warm welcome. It's certainly very exciting because La Liga is extremely exciting and, you know, getting an opportunity to, dis- to discuss all these, you know, amazing games. It certainly fills me with a lot of happiness and just looking forward to an amazing session, I would say. 
Thank you so much, Anna. Great to hear that passion in your voice. Next up, of course, is the big daddy of La Liga, as we call him here, Juan Cobos Hernandez. Juan, it's been a while. How are things going in Europe right now? Good, good. Can you hear me well? Hello? Loud and clear, Juan. Your voice is okay. uh, as good as ever. Okay, perfect, because I'm just in a new device, so I wasn't sure if I had um, the correct settings. It's been, it's been very good, and, um, you know, um, next week or in a couple of weeks... I'll be there in India with you guys. So it'll be it'll be a good feeling to connect in the same time zone. Absolutely. You know, looking forward to hosting you in India one and it'll be great to discuss football as ever. Next up is of course Dharma Durai, another regular of La Liga fam. Dharma, you must be pretty pleased with uh, Barcelona's results of late. Oh, absolutely. We are quite happy. You, know, you can't ask for better. But uh, I wouldn't yet count my chickens yet. You know, uh, good progress made, but knock, knock, there's a long way to go. So, but yes, very upbeat compared to, you know, how it was last time around. Very upbeat indeed. And it's a pleasure to have another newbie to joining us this time. It's Nihal Kolako, who, by the way, you know, we all met at La Liga Fam during our on-screen event featuring Real Betis and Sevilla. Nihal, great to see you then and equally good to see you here. Likewise, thanks a lot for hosting me. Um, looking forward to discussing, you know, the La Liga's uh, roundup of events. And yeah, excited to be here. And rounding off the speaker's panel, last but certainly not the least, Sam Leverage from Europe. Sam, it's been a while. How, how is football going down there? Oh, good. Thanks, yeah. No, everything's good here. And not great weather in Madrid this week, but, but busy. Yeah, looking forward to the action. Well, Europe and weather, we can have another podcast right on that topic, isn't it? So, all right, guys, before we go to the fixtures of the last weekend, I just want to remind everyone, this is, of course, La Liga Fam, brought to you by MTV India and Booth Select. MTV and India and Booth Select are the broadcast partners for La Liga in India, and we're going to be broadcasting the games for the next three seasons. First up this weekend is, of course, a pretty interesting game with Atletico Madrid hosting Cadiz. It's at uh, Friday night, Saturday morning at 1.30 in the early hours, India time. So do make sure to check it out. Along with that, of course, we have a challenge. One of our promotional activities coming up is called the La Liga Ultimate Challenge. And this week, leading up to the weekend's fixtures, we're going to be discussing the Rayo, Vallecano and Sevilla game. And of course, in that game, as we've done before, you need to predict the right scoreline to win some really cool merchandise, whether it's a jersey of your choice or some other La Liga merchandise. And if you're lucky, come end of the season, you could, of course, win a trip to Spain to watch your favorite La Liga team live. That sure sounds a very, very interesting and very exciting prize to play for. So make sure, guys, to follow the social media handles of MTV India on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. Take part, as the details suggest. And who knows, you could be one of the lucky winners of some exciting merchandise. And last but not the least, if you like the content that we're doing on here, on Twitter Spaces, on Instagram Live, on Clubhouse, and everywhere else, virtually, on a digital platform, along with the broadcast, do make sure to give us a follow. Give all the speakers a follow, because all these guys come prepared, get some fabulous content in. And of course, the more followers you get, the more you know spaces you can attend, or the more Clubhouse rooms you can attend. And then, of course, you can be part of a lot more conversations going forward. Okay, now let's get underway with the weekend fixtures. First up, I want to come to you, Anand, uh, representing FCB Mumbai, featuring Elche and Barcelona. Elche won Barcelona 2. Possession was dominated by Barca. Same goes for the chances. But Anand, it must, be a, it must have been a huge relief to see that penalty go in from Memphis Depay. Yeah, in fact, we were attending the screening and we had uh, Dharma as well, Subhu. And uh, a lot of guys listening, we were at the screening together. It was a big relief, you know, uh, Memphis Depay scoring that penalty. Inch-perfect penalty, I would say. And it was a relief because we couldn't uh, convert a lot of chances that we had. Uh, most of them were simple tap-ins or even a... I mean, a, a good finish would have, you know, sealed the game earlier for us. But a late penalty... And a penalty which decides the course of the match is uh, something that gives you a surreal feeling. So, yeah, edging pass against Elche was something, um, you know, made us happy because we have been performing consistently well. And we don't want to drop our shoulders uh, against teams like Elche. So, yeah, a good win. I would take it three points. 
three points indeed and subu what uh, dharma rather what could have you know impressed you also was a fact that the new signings traore and especially obameyang you know they are kind of settling in pretty well because interestingly zavi had a front three in the previous game of of gavi oba and dembele and uh, or rather in in this game and in the previous game he featured obameyang traore and torres so you know he's mixing it up a bit you had torres coming off the bench and of course scoring that all important uh, goal as well so you know the squad is being used well and the players seem to be gelling and it just seems to be a happy environment in that camp nou dressing room uh, uh yeah so absolutely uh, i mean you forgot the most important signing that's daniel alves uh, i think the most important signing is him uh, for various other reasons i mean even though he's a he's a, he's 38 years old uh, i think chavi has very clear ideas as you said he has a midfielder like like gavi on one side you know to to play more inside and he has a pure winger on the other side with a dembele or adama traore so the ideas are very clear the, the most important thing that he's done in my opinion is that he has helped sergio busquets a lot sergio busquets was very isolated before now he is he's, he's managed to you know make a system where franky de jong and and alves or dest even dest for that matter are able to you know uh, you know basically stay closer to busquets and 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 not uh, you know get in pressure too much i think that's that, that's where you see the results but of course Uh, you are give credit to everybody. Ferran, Ferran has gelled well. Dembele has been playing more regularly. This is the most regular I've seen him play in what five years. And and uh, you know I don't want to speak much about the firm, uh, about him, but 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 I think I think everything is working well. So I'm glad we are third. But but again, I mean uh, I think I think it's still a long way to go. I mean uh, in fact this game, for example, uh, we were not able to finish. We had chances, we were not able to finish. And LC were very very even the last game of the Camp Nou they were very good. They they go they scored two goals and. and you know made it a tough affair till the 80th minute so they were very very you know good in defense and they held the ball well so i'm actually glad we won i mean uh, i don't i don't want to you know dismiss of lc as a 16 place team but but they had a good tactics and right tactics against barca right tactics indeed and let me now get mad from la liga loda who of course is a great uh, channel featuring all things la liga for the english speaking world and you got to give them a follow guys we do some collaborations with them and it'll be great to you know continue the partnership as well matt uh, what is the you know word down the street in europe especially in spain because barca you know under xavi after coming in he was under a lot of pressure after disappointing results you know against uh, madrid in the in the cup and of course you know in the early stages of his uh, of his reign but now things are slowly but surely falling into place for him And of course, uh, Matt. I think your yeah, your audio is clear now. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, yeah, I think there was a lot of um, excitement when he was appointed, um, and also a lot of uh, fans knew that it might take some time for him to implement his ideas and his kind of approach to the game on what was a squad that was quite demoralised after a poor start to the season. But um, you've seen, especially since the turn of the year, I think Barca have really improved, and you can see the in their football the way they're playing, the confidence. Uh, we mentioned already the uh, the dressing room is a lot more upbeat, and uh, they're scoring a lot more goals for fun. Of course, Elche made it tough on on the weekend, but before that, Barca had scored I think 19 goals in in six games in February, so that's a, a really healthy average. And uh, they're through to the next round of the Europa League as well, so they'll be looking to try and win that, and of course stay in the top four. But um, yeah, it's been really impressive, and and what impresses me a lot is the way that the goals have been uh, shared around. Uh, the 21 different goal scorers now in La Liga alone. Uh, Ferran, of course, being the latest. Uh, it's it's really impressive when you can kind of look to your squad and and there's so many different opportunities for for goals to come from you. You're never afraid to kind of use the bench. And Xavi's used that very well. The last five goals have been from substitutes, uh, going back to the Athletic game and then this one against Elche. So yeah, it's it's very positive for Barca at the moment. There there will be some tough games ahead. I think the Clasico is only a couple of weeks away. But uh, yeah, at the moment, all things are going well for Barca. You mentioned about uh, Europe, Matt, and let me put that to the Madrid fans because they have a massive, massive, massive fixture tonight in the Champions League. But we won't uh, get into the European competitions. But coming to you, uh, Aditya, representing Bombay Peña, Madrid as well. You know, after a couple of iffy results, just like Barca, have won three on the trot in La Liga. Have of course a very, very tough. Uh, European fixture tonight, but you know when you look back at the weekend, a four-one victory over Sociedad, 
with Oyarzabal scoring the you know the only goal for the away side. It could have been jitters, but Madrid kind of pulled the plugs pretty well, especially in the you know the end of the first half and of course the second half. So you must be pleased. Yeah, uh, I think it was uh, uh, kind of uh, the scoreline. I think doesn't uh, say how big a victory this was because obviously it was a four-one victory, which is massive. Uh, it was a four-one victory after conceding a goal, which is uh, even bigger. But the uh, more important things were obviously uh, Sevilla drew the same weekend, so that really helped. Uh, you know, we have seen that uh, when the competing teams or the uh, teams fighting for the lead, when they draw points. Somehow, Madrid also tends to drop points. But this time, uh, it was great that we got all three points. Sevilla dropped two points. Uh, as you mentioned rightly, a massive, massive game coming up tomorrow uh, for Real Madrid. Uh, so, it's really and uh, complicated by the fact that we have a few players who are not available for that game. So, it's great that Kamavinga got a game uh, this weekend. And also that he scored a screamer. Uh, on top of everything. So, that would give him a lot of confidence in case he does play uh, midweek. And uh, obviously, we, we got the return of Alaba. So, uh, he was injured. He's back uh, for... Uh, he was back this weekend and he's back for midweek. So, yeah, uh, everything rosy actually this weekend. Yeah, indeed. The Militao Alaba partnership has, of course, come back and, you know, who've done pretty well this season. Really good uh, tight defence for Madrid. But coming to you, Anandu, from uh, Penam, Kerala, you know, it's interesting because while a lot of people will, of course, you know, Madrid fans, of course, will want Madrid to, to progress in the Champions League again in what will be a very tough fixture against PSG at home, you think that, uh, you know, to, just to play devil's advocate, a defeat can kind of make Madrid's, you know, can give that motivation to this Madrid team to go on and win possibly, uh, you know, a league double or do you think that uh, it would be like, you know, they'll get into complacency and they might, you know, for lack of a better word, screw up the league as well? Yeah. Hi. Uh, so, good evening, everyone. So, uh, <laughs> the question is very clear. And yes, I think, uh, I mean, uh, the momentum is with us right now. So, currently, uh, the match coming up tomorrow is definitely going to be one of the... Um, important crucial fixtures in this season itself but still uh, having a eight point lead in the la liga definitely uh, and just 11 matches remaining i think that would be one of the greatest i mean uh, the, it, the importance will be given more to the uh, champions league considering there is an eight point lead with 11 matches remaining and uh, the i mean we are losing a lot of i mean excuse me uh, we are losing some key players tomorrow for tomorrow's matches, but still Kamavinga stepping up uh, wonderfully. I mean, it was an absolute pleasure watching that match. 4-1 against Sociedad was one of the uh, best matches that I've seen this season. So, I want that intensity of football both in the Champions League as well as the, uh, La Liga. Yes. Demanding fans as ever. Yes. And, uh, you know, just, uh, just on a side note now, going into... Atletico's Madrid, Atletico Madrid's game because uh, we have a lot to cover today. Let me get in Atleti India's uh, Arnab joining us uh, from uh, Kolkata, I believe. Arnab, uh, you know, Atleti again had another pretty good victory, an away from home win against Betis, who are doing pretty well this season, a 3 1 away win. And uh, you must be pretty pleased with the fact that after Betis scored that equalizer to, uh, you know, through Christian Tello, you all didn't kind of succumb to the pressure and you actually took it upon, you know, the second half, you enforced the play and you got those two goals, which is pretty unlike Atleti's season so far, where you kind of, you know, succumb to the pressure and you kind of drop back, drop deep and, you know, consider those late goals. Definitely, it was a extremely welcome win because the season, like you rightly mentioned, it has been a very topsy-turvy one. And of course, who can forget that shock loss against Levante? So, a hat-trick of wins now, which hopefully would be converted into a fourth consecutive win. Of course, the win against Real Betis, I think one of the major factors would be the performance by Felix. I mean, we all know about his potential. He's a you know sublime performer on his day. But the manner in which he took on the leadership and grabbed the initiative on a day when the team relied on him to get the job done, delivered the goods when it mattered the most, he stepped up, he became the key performer in a match 
which could have you know which could well go on to make or break the season because let's face it the competition for the champions league spots it's heating up massively and a defeat here or even a draw could have gone on to cost us massively but then amazing performance and one one more pleasing aspect i would say is that we have got different scorers stepping up like in the last match you had renan lodi coming on and scoring a brace now you have got somebody like thomas lemar coming out and scoring a late winner so the confidence seems to be really high and i would say a really good sign because um, you know after such a poor start to the season which was completely unexpected the team is again showing some confidence some you know charisma on the pitch we can see some signs of the old atletico madrid which we all love diego semione he's also you know showcasing why he's such a master tactician out there on the pitch he's showcasing his dominance over the opponent and long bait continue that's the best way to sum it up I think you pretty much summed up the entire game really well, uh, Arnab. But taking that to Sam, who of course you know has uh, his heart with Atleti, I think you wouldn't mind me saying that, would you, Sam? Talking about the no, game, sure. what's what's interesting is that Simeone started with a three at the back again. This time with Mandawa, Jimenez, and of course Felipe at the back. And you know he had those uh, wing backs, which of course were Salchko, you know, getting injured and coming off. You think that he might stick with that back line now, going ahead? Yeah, I think he might do more through necessity than anything else because with the injuries and so on, I think Marcus Llorente is the only right back until Daniel Vaz is back available. And so that means that Aleti kind of will have to go with, with that shape. I think that the last few weeks, Aleti will look much better in defence and, and especially kind of with Reynildo in the left central role. So I think it will be interesting to see how Simeone kind of adapts to that. But I wouldn't be surprised if they stick with what they had later on against, against Betis because it seemed to work very well. Suraj, I have a small question to ask uh, Sam and Atleti, uh, actually. Can I? Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to ask you guys, you know, it's the first time I saw a lineup of Atletico. Typically, you know, Atletico always had a, had a number nine or a centre forward. Costa or Suarez or uh, uh, Mandzukic or whoever, right? Or, or that uh, there was this Slovenian or Serbian uh, striker also, I forgot his name. This is the first time I saw uh, them playing without, uh, you know, with... with with Felix and and uh, and Correa, uh, and then later Griezmann and and Lemar. So there was no target man, you know, reference. Do you think that's how they're going to play in future? Because I see there are too many talented players, you know, uh, Correa, Griezmann. I mean, whether Griezmann stays or not, you know, Griezmann and and uh, Felix. So do you really think, you know, and and I think they played excellent. What do you what do you think about that? Yeah, I think basically since Luis Suarez has kind of not been as good this season. They've looked to kind of change things up. And obviously with Joao Felix, Angel Correa, um, Antoine Griezmann even, I mean, these aren't kind of target men players. So they've kind of changed the way they attack to have kind of the two players. Usually one of them, a bit like Joao Felix on, on Sunday night, is kind of the more advanced on the last man's shoulder. And one of them will drop a little bit deeper like Antoine Griezmann did. And I think it's working pretty well for, for Atleti of late. So Long term, it remains to be seen whether Diego Simeone will want to bring in kind of a traditional number nine. I mean, Alvaro Morata is still on the books of the club. Um, and if not, then they might just go with this plan and, and see how they do long term with kind of the pairing up front to, to offer something a bit different. Thanks for that, Sam. And of course, uh, just like Real Madrid and just like, uh, you know, some of the other Spanish teams and European teams, Atleti, of course, have a massive, massive second leg in the Champions League as well against Manchester United. Let's see how that pans out. And before I come to, uh, you know, to Matt and to Nihal as well to discuss Sevilla, just want to inform you guys, if you have any questions, just like, you know, Subu asked uh, some of the panelists right now, do DM us either on my personal handle on Suraj Bala or, of course, on MTV India. Do DM, DM us a question or, of course, send in a request as well. And if your question is relevant or if, it's, if the comment is relevant, I will definitely read out to you, you know, read out the, the question to the panel in probably the second or the third segment. So thanks so much, guys. And... Uh, do tune in as well. Now, uh, going to uh, Sevilla, which, again, a team that we haven't discussed much this season, not just today, but generally in La Liga fam. Nihal, you're, of course, a massive Sevilla fan, you know, and one of the few Sevilla fans, if I may add, in India. Talk us through, you know, your experience on, of course, the on-ground event that we did between Sevilla and Betis, where Sevilla won 2-1, and the weekend's fixture, which was a disappointing nil nil draw against Deportivo, where not too many chances were created by the away side. Yeah, uh, I mean, just to start off with the, you know, El Gran Derby, at least that, you know, really went well, you know, so the the boys stepped up exactly when it was needed in El Gran Derby to take out Real Betis after losing out in the Copa del Rey to them. 
Um, so that was, I mean, it was a great event. We had quite a few, they, I was surprised to see a couple of Real Betis fans there. And it was great to see their sort of enthusiasm just slowly diminishing as the night went on. Um, fantastic result, you know, 2-1. Um, I think I predicted about a 2-1 score back then. Um, I might have changed it to 3-1. Uh, but but that game, when you look at it, you know, we didn't have too much possession. Betis had most of the ball, but we just sort of converted the chances that we needed. And, you know, moving on to the um, Alaves game, we kind of hoped for the same result. But quite a few missed opportunities. Ocampos had a couple of uh, chances early on. Um, we, I mean, Alaves as well had like quite a few chances, but again, then again, we do have the best defensive record in the season, in the in the league this season. So, you know, that uh, fair play to the centre-backs to, you know, keep a clean sheet. And yeah, we had that last minute chance set up by Kunde as well, but missed by Muni. So that was quite disappointing. I was, you know, at the edge of my seat, hoping that, you know, they just seal in a quick 1-0 victory. But I mean, that's that's been the that's been the case with a couple of you know on the road fixtures for Sevilla. You know, we've got four draws I think in the past thirteen games, even though we've been unbeaten. But I feel like in a league such as this, where we need to k- catch up with Madrid, you know, sort of every point counts. So, looking forward to the next few games, hoping they'll scrap out a couple of one nil victories until they eventually meet me uh, match up with Madrid. And yeah, hopefully that gets you know that's where we'll really sort of pick off points from them. You know, before I go to Juan, who has been waiting very patiently, Nihal, I'm already getting questions on the back channel. How many, you know, it's been, how many years has it been since you started supporting Sevilla? And how did this obsession with Sevilla come along? Um, it's been fairly recently, though. Um, I think it's, it's about, about two to three seasons only. Um, personally, for me, even where I work also now with FC Bengaluru United, we've signed like a partnership with Sevilla FC. So that worked well in, you know, getting all-inclusive access with Sevilla FC. So I started, you know, engaging with members from the from the club and, you know, it was just a very inclusive moment for me. So that's where the sort of, um, the love for, this, uh, for the club sort of uh, started building on. One, uh, I'm going to get you in board. Apologies for making you wait a bit. But uh, what is your, you know, highlight of the weekend for you? And talk us through a bit about Sevilla as well, you know, and the stunning form that they've showed throughout the season. You mean like for the upcoming weekend or the past weekend? The past weekend, the past round of fixtures. Yeah, it has to be. It has to be. I mean, for me, there are two highlights. One of them, it has to be Real Madrid convincing win. And Real Madrid was missing um, Cross, which is a key player. And um, they they were probably um, with with um, full focus on, on this midweek game as well. But... Ancelotti is, is 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 trying to try to or trying to lock up La Liga and um and definitely they did a great job impressive comeback win it could have been more than four goals so that must be uh one of the highlights and the other thing has to be Joao Felix Joao Felix um it feels like finally uh Simeone is kind of um giving up on him in terms of like okay I have to put him in the pitch and and he's delivering and it's not just like the both goals he scored but the way he kind of like changes um the offense for atletico atletico looked much more um refreshed this couple of weeks with um with felix with marcos llorente in good shape now with griezmann starting in the 11 as well so they, there's another team that I believe it's 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 going to go up for the for the last part of La Liga, and I think it's going to be uh, solid in the top four. I think Barcelona, Real Madrid, uh, Seville, and 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 Atletico are going to be again the top four. And regarding Seville, um, I think indeed the figures in the last seven games of La Liga uh, are two wins and five draws. And it is true that Sevilla has been missing players uh, consistently, um, whether it was for the African Nations Cup, then they have missed uh, Ocampos or Kunde for a few games, Papu Gomez, Martial. And, and that cannot be an excuse because in the end, what we see is that it's a team that is kind of like lacking creativity Corona can bring some creativity, maybe Papu Gomez in certain uh, moments, but 
uh, Lopetegui tries to spe speculate too much. Um, they're not being creating that many chances. They're not being uh, very polished in finishing. Actually, Seville, um, even if it's they are like a second in, in the table, they they are not that up high in 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 terms of like scoring in in this in this competition. And yes, they are the team that has received the least goals, but. Um, they probably have enough talent to propose uh, a little bit more, and that's maybe what is causing them uh, this this streak of 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 throw-ins. Thanks for that, Juan. I think you summed up uh, you know Sevilla season pretty well, and we'll definitely come back to Sevilla for the ultimate challenge, and of course for the next week's fixture as well. Before we, you know, uh, do a roundup or complete the list of fixtures over the weekend, I got to come to you, Matt, about the game of the weekend. Certainly for me, Celta four, Mallorca three, seven goals in the game, two red cards, a 97th minute winner by Iago Aspas. I mean, the game had everything, didn't it? Tell us, you know, just talk us through that uh, absolutely thrilling game. Yeah, I mean, well, you summed it up perfectly there, Siraj. I mean, who expected seven goals between Celta and Mallorca? Uh, it wasn't one of the fixtures which, you know, jumped out at you when you looked at them ahead of the game. But, uh, yeah, it really served up a treat. And it was a shame that it was kind of being on at the same time as the Manchester derby because a lot of people would have obviously been watching that game. But um, for the La Liga fans, they were treated to a classic. Um, fantastic game. Celta probably did deserve to win. They were never behind in the game. They went ahead every time. Um, but it did look like they'd thrown it away with that that late um, uh, Salva Sevilla penalty for Mallorca. Uh, and they were down to 10 as well. And, and Mallorca were the ones who thought might be able to go and sneak the win. But then again, another handball, which it's been quite a theme this weekend. Some of the handball calls and a few fans are not too happy with the way that's being interpreted by referees. But that's that's another thing. Um, but yeah, Yago Aspas, what a player yet again for Celta. He's just always the man to turn to. Um, he, he's just, he epitomises everything about that club uh, and two goals on this game. And uh, yeah, where would they be without him? I mean, they probably would have got relegated a few seasons ago. He kept them up pretty much on his own. And uh, I must say, I was hoping Celta would push forward for, for Europe this season. I thought they had a chance with the squad they had, but they've been a little bit inconsistent. But this was a game that they definitely um, showed their best and, and also their worst defensively. But it's interesting, Chacho Cudet, the coach, before the game, he was saying he likes to play attacking football and he'd always prefer to win 4-3 than 1-0. And of course, it was almost like he'd seen it in, you know, in, the, in the distance that this was going to be the result. So, yeah, really thrilling game. And uh, again, it shows the depth of La Liga and there's a lot of quality players in, in, in every team, really. So, yeah, one to definitely celebrate. Absolutely. If you guys just thought La Liga was about the top three or the top four, you got to look down a bit because there are some thrilling, thrilling teams who play some fantastic football. And of course, we have results like the 4-3, three, the 3-2s three that we often talk about. Now, talking uh, just a bit about Aspas, which uh, Matt just mentioned. Remember, guys, he's on 13 goals as of now. Number two in the goal scoring charts. Seven behind uh, Karim Benzema. So, Benzema has a very good chance to you know, get the PGT. But uh, who knows? Aspas, if he gets a run together, he might, of course, challenge them towards the title. And talking about Aspas and Benzema, we also have a title race to discuss. Sevilla right now are just about eight points behind Real Madrid. And uh, just before we do that, just a reminder, guys, I can already see your questions coming in on the back channel and also quite a few predictions on our MTV India page as the space has been undergoing about the Rio Sevilla game. So do you know send in your predictions for the weekend fixture as well. But... Uh, before we go to the you know the title race, just a reminder, guys, if you like the content that we're providing, do give us all a follow. Do follow the MTV India channels, of course, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. We do a lot of promotional activities before the weekend fixtures. We do, of course, aside from the broadcast, we do a lot of digital campaigns, virtual live parties like the one I hosted between Barcelona and Atletico Madrid, where guys come in Indiana joined us, and plenty, plenty more is on the horizon. So do give us a follow and do, of course, tune in to the MTV India handles to follow all the exciting contests and the prizes that, of course, you can win. And another reminder, this Friday at 1.30 in the night, that Saturday morning, India time, it's Atletico Madrid hosting Cadiz. That's the first fixture. This is, of course, brought to you by MTV India and Wood Select for the Indian subcontinent. Now, getting into the title race, guys, and this is something that, again, we haven't spoken about that much in the past uh, La Liga fan episodes. 
Let me come to you, uh, Sam. Sevilla are right now eight points behind uh, Real Madrid, having played the same amount of games, 27. Barcelona, having won, you know, played one game fewer, on a stunning run, now at 48, 15 points behind uh, Madrid. Atletico, again, the same, uh, you know, the same points tally, but having played one game more. And then, of course, you have Betis, Sociedad, Villarreal, and, and the rest coming. Can you realistically see anyone except the top two mounting a challenge to the title? No, and I think that's pushing it even to say that the top two will be able to mount a challenge. I think realistically it's Real Madrid to lose now. I mean, they're not completely safe. I mean, Sevilla are still up there, but Sevilla's form, the injuries they've had and everything, I think it'll be very difficult for them. Um, and then the chasing pack, I think they're all going to be more concerned with kind of the top four race. I think that is a very interesting one to keep an eye on over the next few weeks. Um, Barcelona look like they're going to kind of cement third place, but Atletico, Betis, Real Sociedad, and Villarreal aren't far behind. I mean, they could all kind of come into contention for the, the third and fourth spots. So I think Real Madrid will will be pretty optimistic about seeing out the title, but Sevilla need a miracle now to, to make a real challenge, and I think Barcelona are, are just too far behind. You beautifully teased, uh, you know, your way to the, my next question, which is actually, you know, can Sevilla really go all the way and, you know, pull Madrid all the way into the title race before, let's say, you know, May. And uh, let me take that to one. One, can you, in any realistic sense, leaving aside any loyalties that you might have or any wishes that you might have, can you see anyone but Madrid winning the title? Uh, it's very difficult. And um, let me put it this way. Even if Barcelona wins the game that they've got in hand, I think the difference is 12 points, right? Then um, beating Real Madrid would make it nine. It's too far. And um, Seville, it's within distance, but there are a lot of factors that play uh, that uh, a big role. And I don't think Seville has the, the focus to go for La Liga. I think, I think Real Madrid can still lose points and we can see uh, the competition opening up but um, it'll be difficult yeah it will be difficult for Sevilla as the consensus out here and I don't think too many will disagree to be fair except the most optimistic of Sevilla fans maybe Nihal will disagree yeah that. Suraj so basically yeah, so probably. basically so basically I understand well, hold on I understand that um, La Liga is still open there's like still like what 10 games to be played maybe a little bit more Depend on, on the team, 11, 12. Barcelona, I think, is 12. Um, so there are many things that can happen, and you and we still have to to watch every game. But um, I would I would maybe focus on on, on different uh, on different challenges like who's getting into top fifth, top six uh, spots, relegation battles, and uh, even the the fight for the for the top four that is still very open. I think. Uh, the championship is done. You know, with you guys as panelists, honestly, you're making my life very easy because you're like literally teasing me to the next question really well. So my next question, as one said, was actually about relegation. And Matt from La Liga Lowdown, let me put that to you. As we discussed, you know, before the show, uh, right now, between 15th in the table, Etafe, and uh, 18th, that's Cadiz. That's just a three-point difference, right? Cadiz on 24 and Getafe on 27. Levante, of course, bottom at 18 and Deportivo just above them at 22. I mean, Deportivo and Levante have really been the, you know, the bookies' favourite to kind of go down for the last uh, two or three weeks now. But can you see any other upsets happening downstairs? Yeah, I think in the last few weeks, the relegation picture has really tightened up. I think maybe, say, in January, I think the bottom three were pretty far adrift and uh, the teams above them were all picking up points. I mean, Elche and Hitafe have both changed their coaches before Christmas and and they've been revolutionary in, in the way they've recovered. I mean, Hitafe looked dead and buried after about 10 games, but now they've pulled right clear. Um, to be honest, I'd say anyone from kind of Espanyol down could still be sucked in. Um, you know, Espanyol and Rio, of course, who started the season so well, they're slipping. They haven't won in 2022. Uh, neither have Granada. They lost again against Valencia and, and sacked their manager, Robert Moreno. So they're now just a point ahead of the drop zone. So, yeah, it's it's a really tight, it's very hard to predict. I think Levante would definitely be the ones to say that they are gone. They, they had some form, of course, that, that win against Atletico Madrid, which we referenced earlier. 
a really surprised win. But um, yeah, I think seven points is a lot for them to make up. But yeah, Alaves, Cadiz, they both they both uh, showed some encouraging signs. Cadiz have only lost one game since Sergio took over. I think that's about seven matches now. So they're looking quite solid, hard to beat. They've drawn 12 games. They've only lost 11 compared to, say, 15 for the bottom two. Uh, Mallorca is starting to slip too. They're, that's a concern for them. Um, so, it, yeah, it's very hard to predict. I mean, Alaves are pretty strong at home. They obviously held Sevilla 0-0 last Friday night. But um, at the moment, I mean, the bottom three, you would say, probably will go down. But at the same time, it remains to be seen how Granada will recover. I mean, they've got Ruben Torresia, the, the B team manager. He's come in to take charge of them for the moment. There was some speculation that maybe Javi Callejo would come in. He was the one that, of course, came to Alaves last season and saved them. Um, but at the moment, it, it's just the B team coach that's coming up. So we'll see how they respond to that change. But uh, yeah, as I say, there's a lot of teams that, that are right in trouble. And, and Hitafe, for all the things we've said, how well they've done this season in terms of recovering from where they were their away form is still terrible so if if they can't win the games at home they could they could get dragged back down so yeah it's, it's about seven eight teams i think are, are still really in this battle so it, it makes every game intriguing i mean we say the title race is pretty much done and i would agree with that but at the same time as as one said every, every everything else is very much open so really exciting to see how it all plays out you know, it's tied at the bottom. It's tied for those Champions League places. And of course, it is also tied for those Europa places and the Conference League as well. So a lot to play for, as the boys have said, in the last stretch, in the big stretch of this La Liga season. Do tune in, guys, to MTV India and Wood Select for all the action in the Indian subcontinent. It's, of course, brought to you on your screens after a couple of seasons. And it's going to be great to catch all the action starting this weekend this Friday night, Saturday morning, it's Atletico Madrid hosting Cadiz at 1.30 in the early hours of Saturday. Do tune in, guys. All right, before we go to the weekend's fixtures, the upcoming fixtures, that is, we've got a few questions coming up. And we also got one of the listeners joining in, Balvinder Paji. I'm going to send him the invite once again. First up is a question by a Barcelona supporter. And uh, either of the boys, Anand, I think you uh, Anand uh, from FCB Mumbai, you can probably take this question. One of the fans, Rohan asks, is Aubameyang and Barcelona a match made in heaven? As straight as it gets, what's your, what's your take on it? Uh, like we discussed in the previous session that we had, how, how Aubameyang has been a successful goal scorer and he can actually fit into any team as a number mm-hmm. nine, someone who can score from inside the box and also from outside the box. So... I mean, you can term him as a you know match made in heaven or any sort of fancy word that you'd like to use. But a player of Aubameyang's caliber can fit into any team and can you know bang, bang goals as and when you want. So yeah, uh, the signing of Aubameyang has been very fruitful for Barcelona, and also he has a point to prove to his previous employers that he's still useful. So yeah, I mean, whatever he's doing on the pitch is doing right for us. Uh, of course, there's always a room for improvement, and we. Hope that he keeps on improving and keeps on scoring more goals. Aubameyang in Barcelona. Maybe maybe you guys are right. Maybe it's a match made in heaven, Rohan. That's the answer to the question. Okay, we also have from the audience, Balvinder Paji, one of our sports handles who's been a regular listener on this uh, on this space. Balvinder, what's your question or your comment for the panel? Hi, Suraj. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. And... Um... More power to you for holding such beautiful, engaging discussions. Uh, so I will just take a cue from the last speaker um, and and probably stick my guns to, as quote unquote, guns to Obama Young question. Um, I think Obama Young is definitely a match made in heaven. And I was just watching some videos where um, of his Borussia Dortmund time along with uh, Dembele. So I think both of them have gotten a new lease of uh, life. And um, I think I think that is going to. I, mean, I don't think Barcelona is going to win the season um, this time around, but definitely uh, I think they will leapfrog over um, Sevilla. Uh, so yeah, I think I, I'll I'll just stick to that for today. Thank you, Suraj. Thank you, Balvinder, and uh, great to have you. Okay, Nihal is having a very laughy emoji there. Uh, Nihal will come to you on that. But Dharma, as another Barcelona supporter. Do you, uh, you know, do you agree with Balvinder that Barca is going to finish above Sevilla? 
Yeah, I do think that. I do think we'll finish second for sure. Uh, I mean, because uh, the momentum is very strong and uh, the quality of Xavi's football is, is there, you know, for sure. But one thing I want to say is that Real Madrid are definitely going to win La Liga because uh, I think uh, basically the, the senior players, uh, Modric, Benzema uh, and Cruz, I think they, they, they realize that uh, they, they haven't won many La Ligas due to various reasons. Uh, partly due to Messi and and partly due to Atletico winning last time, so I think uh, they'll go for it. They will. They're not gonna get, you know lose in any way. Even even if Barca were maybe Barca were where Sevilla is now, right? I mean where they put pressure week on week, you know with results and you know not not drop points, then that mental pressure will show. But otherwise, Real Madrid, I don't think I don't think they're gonna lose at all for sure, uh, definitely. And uh, and I agree with Anand on Obama Young. Uh, the only thing is that you know I was not very really sure about how he'll fit in because Xavi wanted someone who'll play with his back to goal, you know, like Morata. Uh, but uh, but Aubameyang has fitted in very very well and and he offers something very very different, especially on counter attacks. You know, him and him and Dembele are excellent on counter attacks. And uh, in that sense, you know, like he has adapted and we have also adapted to him. So I think it's worked out very well and I definitely see him continuing maybe for a couple of years more. All right, guys, we've just got about 15 minutes left. Normally, you know, we don't do as many audience uh, questions, but I really want to get the audience engaged and, you know, to get as many questions answered from the back channel. But for paucity of time, we're going to have to switch to the La Liga Ultimate Challenge, which, of course, is now being featured in the promotions of the MTV India sites on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. And this week, we want you guys to predict the scoreline of Rayo Vallecano hosting Sevilla. Sevilla, of course, number two on the table as we discussed. And let's have a very quick round of rapid-fire scoreline predictions. Just the predictions across the board. So I'm going to start off with you, Sam. What's your prediction for Rayo Sevilla? 2-0 Sevilla, I think. Rayo is home. Paul is, is going off the boy. I think Sevilla are going to need the points. So 2-0 Sevilla. Next up is Matt from La Liga Luda. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to go one nil Sevilla. I think they don't score enough goals away from home, and and yeah, Rio are are in bad form, but at home is is slightly more better. So I'm going to go one nil Sevilla. Next up is Anand from FCB Mumbai. Uh, I'll go two one for Sevilla because they have been in a good run of form. But I think Rio would squeeze in a goal, also the home advantage to them. So it would be two one to Sevilla. Dharma, what about you? Uh, 1-1. Okay, we have a, one draw finally. So, someone going against the trend. Next up, of course, Aditya from Bombay Peña. Aditya, what about, uh, what, what's your prediction? I think uh, it'll be a tonal win for Sevilla. I think they'll do well to uh, keep up. And this should be an easy fixture for them, even if it's away. The other Real Madrid supporter from Kerala, Anandu Sankar. Yeah, I honestly hope that... Uh... <laughs> Uh, Sevilla uh, loses. But realistically speaking, I think it will be a 2-0 win for Sevilla. Was that, do you say, a 2-0 win? Yeah. Okay, 2-0 is a pretty popular scoreline here in this uh, prediction round. Next up, Atleti India. What's your prediction, my friend? one all draw. Okay, we have another one all draw. One. The Big Daddy. What's your prediction? 1-1. One, one. And finally, Nihal, the Sevilla fan, the lone Sevilla fan in the panel. Nihal, you've got to see a Sevilla win, haven't you? Yeah, 100%. I, I, I'm, I'm quite surprised that, they, you know, just because we've had a previous draw, that we're not going to expect another draw. I mean, I have kind of I've lost the last five games, 13th on the table. I think this will be a 3-0 sweep. i got to agree with Sam in terms of a 3-0 victory for Sevilla. All right, and let's finally close it with Balvinder. Balvinder from our audience. Balvinder, what's your prediction for Rayo, Vaikano, Sevilla? I will, uh, I will stick with the Dharma's opinion this time. I think let's give Dharma a chance to 1-1 draw. My goodness, Dharma and Balvinder, <laughs> Balvinder agreeing on something that's a rare commodity these days. But uh, as you guys were talking, a lot of comments are coming in on the MTV India's Twitter channel where we promoted this uh, contest. And the majority are, of course, going for a 2-1 scoreline, 2-1 in favor of Sevilla, which is uh, pretty much what the panelists have said on the panel here as well. So thanks for that, guys. And remember, guys, there's still some time left, around three or four days left for this challenge. So if you want to win some La Liga merchandise, or, of course, at the end of the season, 
win a trip to Spain, do you know send in your score line on Twitter or Instagram, and of course, make sure to follow and tag the MTV India handle as well. Thanks, guys. And now, finally, we've got 30 minutes left for the show. Let's look ahead to the weekend fixtures, starting with Atletico Madrid hosting Cadiz. Let's uh, take it away, Sam. What's your reading of uh, this game? And will you be at the at the stadium watching the game? Yeah, I'll be there on Friday night. It's, I can't think of a time that Atletico have ever played on Friday night at the Estadio on the Metropolitano. So, it should be a good atmosphere. And Cadiz, I mean, they're picking up some form of late, but I think Atletico are as well. So, this could be kind of a, a party atmosphere if Atletico can take an early lead. And, and fingers crossed, they'll, they'll pick up the win. Arna from Atleti India, do you guys feel that uh, Simeone is going to like stick with the same back line or is he going to chop and change? Definitely, we see him sticking to what worked and uh, we would al- always be you know, optimistic about the fourth consecutive win in the La Liga. But then, you know, let's not jinx things over here because we have seen how things can really backfire when it comes to Atletico Madrid. Fingers crossed, that's the back line. That's the main thing I would say. Fingers crossed. You don't look that optimistic, uh, or not? But uh, you know. Well, can we be optimistic with Atletico, with Atletico Madrid? All right, fair enough, fair enough. I can see the concern on your voice there. Let's see what the weekend awaits. Next up is, of course, uh, let's move aside with the mid-table teams. Let's focus on Real Betis, Athletic Bilbao. Betis, of course, we touched upon them in the last uh, Twitter space. Let's uh, take it to you. Uh, Matt from La Liga Lowdown. Matt Betty's having a pretty good season until very recently, but off late, they of course lost to Sevilla. And then again, they had a pretty disappointing result against Atleti, you know, at home actually, uh, losing 1 3. Uh, it's going to be a pretty tricky try, I guess, for the home side. I think it will be, yeah. I, I think Betty's have been fantastic this season, as you say. Um, they're the only Spanish side fighting on three fronts, of course, in the league in the Copper, made the final last week. And of course, they're still in the Europa League. And this game comes in between the two legs against Eintracht Frankfurt. So that may play a part. Pellegrini might rotate a little bit, depending on which one he prioritises. But um, yeah, I think Athletic Club, they've been very strong at home. So this might be a bit more of a challenge for them coming away to the Benito Villamarín. So I'd probably say better to favourites for this match. But um, Athletic will make it difficult for them. And yeah, it might be a kind of long way to break down the athletic defence. who have been very strong this season. Um, but yeah, I would say Betis in the end will probably get the job done. But uh, they'll need to because, like we said, Atleti and Barca, they're really picking up form. And, and Betis were third for a long time. But after last weekend, they're now down in fifth. So if they want that Champions League football, they need to keep winning. They indeed need to keep winning. And it's going to be much tougher for them now with Barca picking up Arano victories and even Atleti and of course, uh, Sevilla right there at the top. So, it's going to be tough for them to you know, reach that fourth spot if, of course, they could come end of the season. Now, moving on, let's focus at the new camp. Barcelona hosting Osasuna. Anand, uh, again, you know, every time it appears as though Barcelona is, is going to have a routine fixture, a routine easy win at home, there are a few tricky, you know, uh, slippery slopes every now and then. And uh, Zabi will obviously... You know, be sure to you know to pump up the players before this game because it could be a potential banana skin game. Yeah, I mean, uh, teams like Osasuna do uh, cause us some trouble, but I think the atmosphere in the camp has been uh, fully charged since the Javi ha- since Javi has come in, and I think uh, this is the time wherein Javi would like to continue the good run of form which which was there in Feb. Or else, if he dips, it would be said, oh, it was just a fluke that, you know, he did all the turnaround. So, just to carry forward the good work that he has been doing, I think he will surely make sure that we edge past the line and not slip, even though we'll be, you know, a, it'll be a banana skin game. Okay, Dharma, you mentioned earlier that, you know, Danny Alves is the most important signing that Barcelona have done. Talk us through your reading of the situation, why you feel so. Because of his quality, you know, in, in his touch and his tactical, you know, brilliance about, you know, he's not fast, he's not very fast and, uh, you know, he suffers also against uh, fast wingers. But then, but then his positioning and, and he's just a quality, you know, it's just like Modric, it's fine wine, it, it doesn't matter if it's old. You know, the, the quality has no match, even though the, you know, the, the athleticism is not there. So, 
But I mean, I, I think they spoke about it uh, in detail. So what happens is that Bu- Frankie De Jong is not able to, wasn't able to play a good double pivot with Busquets. He was because he always liked to attack and be a box to box. And he had that freedom in in Ajax and uh, you know with 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 another defensive midfielder. Here the problem was that you know Busquets was often alone. So 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 the so the kind of you know the system that Xavi designed is that first you have uh, 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 Alves you know occupying that space uh, next to Busquets and he's able to do that job as a double pivot. And secondly, there's a pure winger playing you know ahead, so you are not losing out on width also you know Adam Traore or or uh, Dembele. So he's able to, you know, use Daniel Alves in the best of his qualities while minimizing the, you know, the cons of having a 38-year-old as your right back. I think it's a great signing. They are even going to renew him for one more year, even increasing his salary. And and apart from that, he's a champion. He's a champion who's won so many trophies. The spirit is the same, regardless of the age. And they recognize that you need to have a player like that in your dressing room, you know, who can really, who can really make a difference, you know, when when the chips are down actually, where where your morale uh, is very important and your mentality is very important. So in that sense, I, and and he's Daniel Alves. You know, he's a legend of the club. He should have never left, honestly. So we are very glad that he's back, even at this juncture, even at the juncture of his career. So that's why you know it's a very good signing. Fair enough, Dharma. Thanks for the tactical analysis there. And of course, uh, guys, we're going to do the next piece right a day before the Clasico, that is uh, 18th or 19th of uh, of uh, this month. So do tune in, and we will of course send out the promotions and everything right before we decide the timeline. Do tune in for that space and it's going to be an absolute cracker of a game, I'm sure, with both Barcelona and Real Madrid performing so well. Now, one, uh, what do you think about uh, Mallorca hosting Madrid? You know, this could be a potential banana skin once again, as we discussed with Barcelona, about an away fixture for Real Madrid. And, you know, is it concerning for you as a neutral that, you know, Benzema is, they're relying so much on Benzema to score those goals? There is a potential upset there, but um, it all will depend on Real Madrid's um, performance midweek. If Real Madrid is competitive or if Real Madrid is, uh, exceeds expectations midweek, probably um, the team is going to be... Um, even the the substitutes are going to be very high in in, in terms of, of moral and 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 I don't think Mallorca will have a chance. But if there's some you know chaos tomorrow and a bad loss and you know some trouble, maybe Mallorca can sneak in uh, a victory there. That's how I see it. I don't think uh, the 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 reliance on Benzema as a scorer is a problem. Actually, I wish uh, my team had someone scoring 20 goals this season. And um, and then even, you know, they, they keep creating chances. Vinicius will keep creating chances. Marco Asensio will just, you know, get the ball and just shoot it from like 35 meters, which is what he does, and um, create a chance out of nowhere. You know, let me take that to Aditya from Bombay Pena. Aditya, while Madrid have a good squad and a pretty deep squad, like always, Ancelotti isn't a manager, you know, associated in the past with, you know, chopping and changing too much. So, do you think that there could be fatigue with the same guys playing, you know, virtually, at least the important guys playing week in and week out? Yeah, I think there is already fatigue. I think uh, we don't have to wait anymore to see the fatigue. Somehow, uh, uh, Luka Modric, I don't know what he's made out of, but... Uh, He's been. He seems to be like uh, better than the Energizer Bunny. He's, he's keep, he keeps going on and on. Uh, but we have seen injuries. Cruz is injured. He's coming back from injury. Uh, hopefully for the midweek game. But uh, Alaba was injured. He came back. Uh, I think uh, specifically for this fixture uh, for next weekend. Uh, in a way, it's a boon that uh, as in I wouldn't. I, I shouldn't say that. But the fact that Casemiro and uh, Mendy will not be playing midweek, so they'll get some rest. Uh, and uh, hopefully, uh, so they would play uh, on Monday. So that's another weird thing. This is a Monday night game, which doesn't really happen with the big teams. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I think the uh, the fact that Ancelo, uh, Carlo Ancelotti does not really like to change much doesn't doesn't believe in rotation. He I don't know what kind of trust he wants to build with uh, with the players who don't play as often. 
We saw Kamavinga score a screamer and he was playing really well as well. Uh, Rodrigo has proved himself. I think he should get more game time. Uh, uh, Aiden Hazard and Gareth Bale keep going in and out of injuries, but I, th- I still think that they can play a little more than they have played. Uh, the defense is a little weird because we don't have enough backup there. But otherwise, as you said, I think uh, we can do very well with playing some of the other players uh, more often so that we don't care into... As in, we've been saved out by Kamavinga this week, last weekend. So it's okay. But you know, but you never know uh, when they will fall short. And especially considering that uh, this week uh, we have uh, three players on yellow cards as well for... Uh, for the Mallorca game, who might get suspended if they get a yellow card for the Classico. Uh, so, that's another tricky thing. Casemiro, Militao and Mendy. So, it's a complicated game for us. I won't say it's uh, it's it's going to be easy. Uh, as in, yeah, we should ideally beat Mallorca, but these are banana skin games, as you said. Anandu, any quick word on tomorrow night's game? Nervous? Tomorrow night's game, yes, absolutely. Uh, it would be one of the uh, crucial most games in the season. So, I mean, the momentum that we are having right now should be utilized much for that game as well. And even if there is a loss, I mean, we have a La Liga title to in our hands, ours to lose. So, basically, I would, uh, I mean, yeah, I would want to see a victory tomorrow and that momentum going on, taking us to another La Liga title. Last but not the least, let's touch upon a bit of analysis of Rayo versus Sevilla. 2-1 was a pretty popular scoreline among the panelists and also among the audience as well, if our MTV Twitter handle is to be believed. But uh, Nihal, I know you've been waiting for a while. You mentioned 2-1 as well, but uh, what's your reading of the game in terms of, you know, from the lack of goals that we saw against uh, Deportivo Alaves? What's your reading? Um, no, so I think just in terms of as in looking at the opposition, Ravi Kano, they haven't got too many goals up across the past couple of fixtures, so that works well in our favor. The last five games have been all losses for them, so you know more credit for us. And this is Sevilla's game to take. I mean, if we want to sort of contend for any sort of title chance, this is exactly where we should be. You know, focusing um, our options. Of granted, we're dealing with quite a few injuries now and then. You know, Martial also not really performing and being injured. So, um, but I still think, uh, as in my prediction, was a three 0 victory. So I still hope on a three 0 victory by you know by the boys. Um, should be able to breeze through, you know. Like they're 13th on the table and, you know, just as long as we keep the ball, keep possession and, you know, just exploit the wings, I think we'll have a pretty pretty s- smooth sailing of a game. All right. Another comment uh, that's come in from uh, Mohan from the back channel. He mentions about uh, Villarreal hosting Celta Vigo and he reckons that it's going to be the game of the weekend. Let me take that to Matt from La Liga Lowdown. Matt, another potential thrilling game. We saw... You know, Celta Vigo uh, versus Mallorca being that fixture in the previous weekend. Talk us to uh, Villarreal, who again is a very inconsistent team against uh, Celta, who of course scored four last weekend. Yeah, it's a great suggestion actually to be game of the weekend. It's um, yeah, I, I think that could well be. There could be goals. Uh, Villarreal have been pretty strong at home in general, um, but yeah, of course they had that defeat against Osasuna last time out, which kind of halted their. Champions League charge, and they're going to have their eyes on the Juventus game, of course, because they travel to Turin in the midweek following this weekend. So they will, might have some, again, rotation for that game in mind. Um, but again, Celta, Aspas is coming there. He's going to want to show uh, the quality that he's, he showed last week. Um, it's interesting, this, these two teams were actually kind of in, in the same relegation fight a few seasons ago. You might remember, um, both teams were down the bottom. Uh, Cazorla was still playing for Villarreal. He was he was crying at one point when uh, when they were struggling. But they both stayed up. And, of course, they're both now what we would consider to be top half teams. Uh, so, yeah, this should be a really good game, really good quality football and show, um, some quality in midfield and attacking areas. Um, we should just say that Alberto Moreno, unfortunately, has a really bad injury. So he, he won't be around for, for a long while now. But, um, but, yeah, apart from that, definitely one to look forward to. And, uh, yeah, make sure you tune into that one. Make sure you tune into that one indeed and make sure to tune into all those games this weekend. First up, it's Friday night at or Saturday morning India time. It's 1.30 in the morning. Atleti hosting Cadiz. It should be a cracker and followed, of course, by quite a few really tasty fixtures. Levante, Espanyol, 
Villarreal, Celta Vigo, as we discussed, Rayo, Sevilla, the game which features the ultimate challenge. And then, of course, we have Betis hosting Atlantic Bilbao, Barcelona, Osasuna, and finally, we close with Mallorca hosting league leaders and title favourites, Real Madrid. Guys, you've been a fantastic panel today. We've really covered a lot, right from, you know, the title race to the last weekend's fixtures, a bit of analysis on Sevilla and, of course, the upcoming weekend games. La Liga fam is really heating up. Next up, of course, as I mentioned earlier, we will be featuring the Classico just a day before the Classico on the 19th, most likely. So do tune in to the MTV India handles. Do follow us, of course, you know, across social media, on Twitter, on Facebook, and, of course, on Instagram. And if you like the content, do give me a follow, Suresh Bala, or, of course, all the speakers, La Liga, Lowdown, FCB Mumbai, Bombay Pena, Pena Kerala, Juan, Dharma, Balvinder, Nehal, and everyone else who've joined us. It's been a great, great session today. And until next time, this is Suresh Balakrishnan on behalf of MTV India, signing off. Take care, guys.